Yourself. Bradley, what, what was last night like for you? Where, where did you, were you at home this time watching? I was at game? home. I was at home. We watched, obviously, uh, City 2. Um, yeah, and a little bit somber there. Unfortunately, you know, they've done a great job for the last, uh, I would say, season, and especially the last 10 weeks, and uh, couldn't get over the hurdle last night. But uh, credit to that group. You know, they've reinvented themselves over the time. And, uh, yeah, then we set the focus to the LA <laughs> FC game and, and watched that, and, you know, um, yeah, just celebrated quietness. A couple of group chats, you know, it felt like New Year's. <laughs> you know, in New Year's, you get a lot of messages. Um, and that's what it kind of felt like. So, again, we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. It's just the number one seed. But, you know, I think it's a remarkable achievement of this group, of this organization, to give, be given the platform to succeed and then to succeed in the way that we did, to clinch number one with two match days to spare. Um, yeah, incredible, you know, so we reflected last night, this morning, you know, enjoying it a little bit, but then back to business and, and Vancouver, like I said, in the post game comes around really quickly. You've been in this league long enough. You've seen expansion teams come. What has made this team so special? I just think a collectiveness, a buy-in, you know, so obviously it was, uh, Externally driven in the beginning, you know, the buy-in because everyone doubted us from where we've come from and, and sort of status is where we are as, as professionals. Um, so, yeah, it was just, you know, extra motivation. But then we start challenging ourselves and driving internal motivation, internal challenges and competition. And that drove us to another level as well. Um, and then every story has its journey, ups and downs and, and bends and roads go, you know, and little detours. And then we have to come up with new scenarios and, and they've, the players found a way to adapt and, and regroup and, and get points and be consistent. So, you know, for me as a coach sitting there and, and to see this group grow um, as, as people, as, as professionals has been an amazing journey. And anything different in your, how you approach the last two games now that you're clinched? No, not at all. We want to stay in our rhythm. We want to make sure that we have focused and uh, driving points. We want to collect points in Vancouver and we want to collect points here at home against Seattle. So, you know, we have to maintain a high standard and, and maintain those levels. For sure, we'll find pause at certain times because we have a two-week break after Vancouver. Um, but yeah, but between now and Vancouver, there's just all very business-minded. Hey, Bradley. Yeah, you've spoken a lot. Uh, about the phrase everybody's nobodies and uh can you now now that everybody's nobodies have won the western conference can you just describe your pride of of the mindset of, of everybody yeah which is we get challenged over time right our philosophy is very demanding on the opponent but to train it every day is equally demanding um to stay engaged to treat every training session like there's something on the line um, and I think that's been the defining factor that there's been no off days um, even on off days you know we're supplying whether it's players with individual edits, their videos, they can see it online, you know. Um, so I think we've kept, you know, we find a good balance between how much is too much and how much or, or how much isn't enough. So I think we found a good balance with that. So, yeah, but again, um, I, I lost words after five match days with, with the group because, you know, to experience the 5-0 and oh, and now we're 32 uh, match days in and, and to still be at a loss for words, uh, it says something about my group. Of course. Brad, I know you don't like to reflect still probably at this point in the season, but where would you put this weekend, not just Saturday night, but everything that happened yesterday, last night, everything, the text, where would you rank that in the Brad story? Yeah, I, again, I don't think about these things because I know the life of a soccer pro or a professional coach or in any industry there's, there's bound to be ups and bound to be downs. Um, and, and just like a soccer ball is round, sometimes you're at the top and sometimes you're at the very bottom and that feels pretty tough. So, and I've experienced both. I've been relegated as a player. I've been promoted as a player. I've won uh, Bundesliga two championships. I've, you know, done a lot of great things, but always the game finds ways to humble you, to put you back down. And it just when you think you've got it all figured out, you don't. So, um, and I think that stood me well over my time um, and kept me in the game for as long as I have been. And uh, I think that's one of my motivating driving factors um, is to guide, you know, players on a pathway that, you know, maybe, you know, they don't have to go through those emotions and experiences, um, you know, of, of a negative standpoint, you know, but surely they have to experience certain things. Um, but if we can guide them along the way and, and they don't trip up and if we can help them, um, you know, I think that's part of our duties as, as a coach. But yeah, I don't, I don't rate these things too high, too low. Staying true to your principles, in other words. Yeah, 100%. I think it's, you know, that's a good way to, way to put it, Tom. Probably uh, Vancouver was here in May, so it's, it's been a while since you played them, and they're also uh, fighting for their lives to make the playoffs. Uh, what have you seen from them since uh, they were here at City Park? 
Yeah, listen, I mean, they've let go of a few players, you know, and, and uh, they have a lot of quality. You know, I've worked with uh, Brian White and, you know, I, I've been following this team because they've, they've changed the style of play. They're very fluid. They're very flexible. They can change different formations uh, just like we do. Um, so they're very adaptive to what teams they play against. Um, they're also very transitional. They're very good on a counter press. And, you know, they have playmakers like Ryan Gould. Um, who are amongst the best in the league. So, you know, it's tough to play at BC Place um, and it's it's never an easy away trip. So, yeah, I think we've traveled very well as a group and, um, you know, I'm excited about coming up. It's almost like playing against your brother because they have similar principles. I can see in many moments, um, you know, I can see a collective buy-in from the group. I can see an effort. I can see a will and a desire to work with and without the ball. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's been fun watching them this season too. And just getting a little bit ahead after this game, you have a 17-day break. Uh, how do you keep the momentum with such a long break? Yeah, first of all, we'll have a mental shutdown after that, you know, but uh, between now and, and Vancouver is, you know, 100% uh, focus on the game and uh, what happens after the game, we'll address that. And But for sure, we'll give the players a few days off and uh, we'll we'll have a scrimmage on the 14th, um, you know, internally. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep ourselves busy, don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, what are the priorities in the next two matches as far as fitness, uh, match readiness for the playoffs? I know you take it game by game, but is this an opportunity to test some things out against uh, what you might see in the playoffs? No, uh, we've done a lot of testing um, in live reps, uh, in live games, and uh, whether it's been formational, whether it's been personnel, um, I think we've done a lot of that and been very fluid. So for us, uh, six points, you know, we're chasing points. We want to make cement, not just history where it's, you know, broken the very next year. We want to try and create something that lasts for a few more years, hopefully. And then uh, does the turf at BC Place play into any thoughts on who you might have available, um, thinking Joachim Nilsson, Rasmus Alm, people like that? Yeah, I mean, I think Joachim's the only one potentially that, that you know, can't turn around. We haven't turned him around much uh, within a four-day span. So I think he's the one we just have to monitor and see how he's doing. But I think everyone else should be available. Coach, I uh, fast-forwarded through the tape last night and looked at all of the Leuven touches. Is it possible that he played a game where he gave the ball away not once and he played a game where he does not make a mistake? Yeah, I don't know. You'll have to give me your tape and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, we look through the game in, in different eyes. You know, we, we see different moments. And, and sometimes the most crucial plays happen without the ball. You know, we, we're not always just focused on what we do with the ball. We're thinking about positional awareness when our teammate is in possession um, to try and get them into spaces to make the pass an easy connection, right? So if, if we are marking ourselves and standing behind a man and we make it almost impossible to play uh, our teammate, it then becomes tough. So, you know, I credit everyone else for being in good spots <laughs> for to make those plays for, for Edu, you know. And thinking about the quality that, that Edu possesses, um, He's a, he's a proud individual, you know, he sets himself very high standards and, and he doesn't settle for anything less. So even if he does, you know, give one away, you know, it, it bugs him internally and, and, he, and he waits and, and he's eager to get that next one ready. So even after the game, he was like, coach, I'm going to turn around. I'm good. You know, so even just the, the competition and the, the willingness and the des des uh, desire for this group, you know, even straight after we've just, you know, got the 17 wins, he's coming to me straight afterwards in the locker room. I'm ready for Wednesday. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Let's let's enjoy the moment and, and let's get ready for Wednesday. So, you know, that's the type of pro he is. Um, and I enjoy working with those type of individuals. And in terms of uh, last night, I know you touched on it with Tom's question, but did you get a, a call from the owner or a text or is there going to be any type of you, Lutz and Carolyn having a little celebration? What type of yeah, we've we've always been in contact, you know, so again, I don't, you know, the worst thing is to be disconnected from an ownership group and just get it when it, you know, when it's when you expect it, right? So we're always in, in contact, we're always trading messages, we're always and I think that's one of the special things about this group and, and about this organization is proximity, proximity, if I need to message Carolyn, or if I need to message anybody um, in the management, I, I, I'm, it's, it's easily accessible, right? So sometimes it's very difficult, you have to set a a schedule in, in some clubs that, you know, could be the case. And, and you hear from owners two weeks later and, and then the moment is kind of passed. So we've always been very open with each other and, uh, you know, we don't want to uh, abuse privileges and what have you, but we've just always been so connected and yeah, it's an inviting environment to feel at home where you work. So, you know, nothing changed with regards to that. There were messages, but it was just a normal, another day. Thanks for going to 
Hi, um, this is Har in Vancouver. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Coach Brad. Uh, you mentioned Vancouver a little bit, BC Place. Have you been up here before in your career? And uh, what are your thoughts on playing in Vancouver? You mentioned it's tough. Why is it tough here? Everything's going south. Can you hear me? Hear your lips. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Um, I was wondering, have you been up to Vancouver before and you mentioned BC Place? Uh, why is it a tough place to play up here? I think I got the gist of your question, Har. Um, yeah, BC Place is tough. Uh, I've been there twice or three times uh, throughout my MLS career so far. Obviously, we have some players who played there. You know, Jake and Tim, uh, they can attest to, to the field, to the situation, to the surroundings, um, to the travel. So, yeah, I think it's a culmination of everything. Um, you know, flying west and, and uh, yeah, it, 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 those trips are always tricky. So, again, I feel we've had very good trips uh, to the west and, you know, I thought we've had good accounts of ourselves, um, you know, especially the latest one to, to L.A. Um, but, yeah, these trips are tricky and uh, we'll, we'll take it seriously. How would you characterize Jake's first season with St. Louis? He had some ups, some downs, some suspensions. How would you summarize it? Yeah, I haven't seen any ups, uh, any, any downs, you know. So, no, Jake's done amazing, you know. Jake, Jake always pushes himself to another level um and and uh, you know i don't think he's had any downs you know even at moments when we you know he's taken a bench role and a supportive role from the sides i think jake has always been willing to learn and you know he's, he's one of the more experienced guys in in our roster so we, we rely on jake a lot uh, for his expertise uh, on and off the field and and just his character you know and uh, i think you've said in on these meetings before where you know i've alluded to to the value that we see in Jake, um, you know, on and off the field. So again, he's done amazingly well. And if you see over the last couple of games, you know, being crucial in some goal contributions as well and really stout, gritty defending. Um, he's come up against some difficult opponents uh, and he's came out through, you know, shining on the other side. So credit to Jake for, for being so persistent um, and resilient. Um, and everybody has ups and downs. I mean, that's just totally the normal progress of life. Um, but it's how you bounce back and how you get back in the game. And credit to Jake, he's, he's stayed the course. Thank you. Thanks for going to John Lupo. Uh, Bradley, first of all, congratulations on the achievement of winning the Western Conference. That, that really is something terrific. I just wanted to ask you a couple of things. First of all, with, with the fact that you won the Western Com Conference, you now qualify for the CONCACAF Champions Cup next year. I know it's next year and you're totally focused on Vancouver and then Seattle and the playoff, but can you offer a few words on what it means to be able to bring uh, international soccer, so to speak, regional soccer, I should say, to St. Louis? Yeah, I believe it's the only second time in the expansion era, right, John? It's only the second time that that's happened uh, in the first time out. Um, and I remember myself as an individual coming here in 2017. I think I played it in 18 and 19 uh, or coached it. Um, and going to see different experiences for me, you know, different soccer venues, different uh, cultures. And for our group, just to see, you know, those experiences as well. Some of the Europeans have never been, you know, in the CONCACAF region uh, to, to play a soccer game. So, you know, I think this only makes you stronger throughout the season. We'll be challenged for sure many moments. But almost the way this season has gone has primed us for next year as well, because we'll have added matches more more intense travels and, and shorter turnarounds. So um, more of the same, I believe. Again, I want, and the other question I wanted to ask you is you mentioned before about the desire and the commitment and the work that this team has put in. And obviously there's still many more things to achieve in the season, but can you talk about just how every day in training and practice and then in the matches, this team constantly, no matter who's been injured, the adversity this team's faced, just the work ethic and the commitment and the dedication they've put in to get themselves to the point where they are Western Conference regular season champions and have set themselves up for a run in the playoffs. Yeah, I think you can only prove people wrong short term. I think that's a short term solution if you're just trying to play and, and prove external world, you know, that they're wrong. Because over time, you get to show your quality, you get to show your resilience, and you get to just show that you can compete and, and contribute in this league. And 
how we've come together. You know, I mean, Klaus said it best in the first month, he thought that we've been training together like two years. Um, and, and that's been since day one. So there's just been an automatic chemistry, a harmony within the group. And, and we've challenged each other many times in, in the season. And uh, we've hit hard resets without you guys seeing it. We've, we've hit the button really hard at times and, and said, okay, it's up to here and no more, you know? So um, there's been a couple of things that we've driven internally ourselves there's been some some benchmarks that we want to set for ourselves. So again, you know, we train like this, but we believe that we belong here. We believe over time. And that's why when we challenge the group, where do you want to finish here? When do you want to do this? When do you want to achieve these points? How do you want to see the next six games? Um, and we set those targets and we we might fall short by a point or we might exceed them by five. Um, but again, it's just holding accountability through the season, but also proving quality because Everyone has played at a level. Everyone believes they have certain talent and to put it on display in, a, in an environment where we, in, we endorse that and we approve it. Um, it just shows that, you know, we have a special group, but uh, yeah, you can only, f I would say, fake it for so long, trying to prove everybody wrong, you know, because then quality takes over and now you've shown it over 32 match days. Congratulations again. Thank you. Uh, Josh Arrow, is he, is he, Good to go. And did he miss Saturday because of his, his back? Or was... Yeah, it's it's part of the, the blessing and the curse this year of using so many players, right? So we've had, you know, guys who have played games starting and then all of a sudden they're not in or not even in the roster, right? So and and that just proves how much depth we've created over the season. Um and, and the beauty of it is guys don't they don't take it personally, you know, they they don't take it as a negative. They know, right, Wednesday's coming up and, and I'm gonna be back in or I'm gonna be part of that roster. So, you know, they they're very happy and and fortunate to have accrued all those minutes as well. Um, because we could have just kept a 14 man roster pretty much throughout the year or 15 and made those same changes and and worn guys out and, and tried it that way, throw the throw the dice and, and see how that went. But uh, we believed in a, in the collective. We believed in a certain game model um, and to get the excellence and, and the quality and the results, you need a lot of players, you need a lot of turnaround. And I think it's proved us right so far. So his back was okay on Saturday. It was more yeah. of a you ran out of yeah, room he's, on the he's roster. It's about Klaus's two way play. Is there a guy that scores a lot of goals and just what he does without the ball as well? Yeah, there was one moment where we were kind of pinned in and they work it around. I think it's there was the Roman, um, the crossbar one where it comes off of the underside of his arm. Um, and then they work it around again. And Klaus is the first one to put pressure forwards. We turn over the ball and then we we start in a, an attacking transition. So, and, and that's part of why we use Klaus sometimes underneath because he does some great work against the ball as well. Um, yeah, he can occupy a lot of spaces with the ball and he's very clever and with you know, relationships with Indy and AZ. Um, but I like his tenacity against the ball. You know, he's urging guys on to step up. You can see his body language. You can see when he's trying to manage guys to be compact and then release on the trigger. So yeah, uh, Klaus is, is a very experienced campaigner, not just, you know, in his body and the way he plays, but also in his brain. He knows exactly the movements and the moments when when's right and when's wrong. And to orchestrate his own personal success, how he takes it inside and then gets a shot off in the same movement and the same sequence. These are something you very rarely see. Yeah. Thank you for joining. All right. Good to, to see. Uh, Brian White and Ryan Gold, they've been scoring uh, a lot of goals and assists. They're the top duo in the league. Uh, we've kind of given them the name Batman and Robin. So how do you slow down Batman and Robin? And uh, what, what superhero would you be if you were a superhero? <laughs> do they sign off on Batman and Robin? Uh, so what, who's Batman and who's Robin? <laughs> We're and, trying to figure that out. They're warming up to it, though. I'll, I'll ask them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see what they say about that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, to see what they've done this year, um, I've seen it up close, you know, the last few seasons. Um, I think they're, you know, two of the, the best attackers in the league, um, and they've always had that chemistry. And, you know, you see it even more this year. So that's, you know, one of our top priorities is to be able to stop, you know, them creating chances together. Thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. I'll, I, hopefully I'll be the villain then. Right? For this Saturday, yeah, we'll do that. Jake, this is, last night was the second time this year you guys got to celebrate a momentous achievement, not on the field, but in the comfort of your own home or wherever you may be. Would you like to get an on-field celebration at some point? And what was last night like for you? Yeah, last night I was, you know, at home watching the game with my wife. Um, you know, we were just watching the time go down. And then, you know, when we saw the result, um, we were just, we were happy. It was, it was something that, you know, we didn't, 
know if we were going to get to this point, you know, going back eight, nine months. But, you know, after you see our body of work and what this team is about, um, that was an expectation for us. Um, and, yeah, I would love to celebrate on the field, but we're saving that for later. Any great exchanges from the chat groups of, uh, you know, of the, the celebration? Yeah, yeah, our, our group chat was 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 going off. Yeah, everybody was pretty was pretty happy, you know, sending all types of emojis, memes, gifts, all that stuff. Yeah, we were happy. And now you feel like just it's back to work. Yeah, and that's I think that's what our team is. You know, we celebrate in that moment, but we still have a job to do. Um, we have our own, you know, internal goals that we want to accomplish, and that was great that we did this. But that doesn't end our season like that. There's no wrong answer to this. I'm just curious of all the the individual stories on your team, guys that were maybe not playing much on previous teams and now are kicking butt with St. Louis city. Is there one player's story that kind of stands out to you and, and why? Yeah. I mean, I think we all have very similar stories, you know, of people calling us rejects like we were right. And castaways. Um, we don't like to be called that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, First place cast. One that, you know, for me, one that comes to mind, um, I've gotten really close with Jared Stroud, mm -hmm. you know, this season, um, New Jersey guy, you know, we instantly click, um, you know, you see the struggles that he had last year, you know, barely touched the field for, you know, reasons that I don't know, but he's come into this, you know, into this club with, with new life. Um, and he's, and he's shown so well, and I'm really happy for him because he's a great guy. Good stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Jake, from my perspective, you bring a certain fierceness to this team and watching you play it. Is that an accurate description? Yeah, sure. I'll take that. I think I get, you know, when the, when the whistle blows, I kind of change my mentality a bit. Um, I like to scream a lot, yell. I so does Brad. I know he loses his voice after every game. So that's <laughs> That's something I try not to do. I don't lose my voice, but yeah, I try to bring you know a little extra edge. Does, do you feel as though that brings the team more energy? Yeah, I think so. I think we have a lot of guys that do that. Um, you know, I think Tim's one of our most yeah. vocal guys on the team. Berkey, um, you know, everyone's kind of demanding a lot from us from each other during games, and we know that if we're getting yelled at or screamed, it's just encouragement, and it's you know it's trying to help everybody push through. But you can really get the message across with your eyes. A look from you means something, it's, it seems to me. Yeah, I'm pretty – I like to use my eyes. Yeah. yeah sometimes <laughs> you don't want to use your – you know, you don't want to yell. So you use your eyes. Yeah. yeah. Especially with That's the refs, fine. right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll pick up on the look aspect because I'm curious. You've had some moments, especially Minnesota with, uh, with Klaus, it seemed, where you're just pointing – and it, it seems like you guys know exactly where you need to be or where you're going to put the ball. So, I mean, talk us through like that mentality and what you're thinking on the field where you don't have to say anything. It's almost a look. Players know where they need to be. You know where you need to put the ball. You can trust that. Yeah, I think that's a testament to the our playing style, our principles that we've, you know, we've learned and what we've been taught. It's over the course of the season, we know where we're supposed to be at all times. And we know what we're expected of and we know what to expect of, you know, our teammates in certain positions at times and moments, not just on the ball, off the ball. And I think that's something that that chemistry that we've built from preseason is showing out in every game now. And it's more and more each time we, each time we play together. You've talked about um, kind of the ebbs and flows of the season, you know, started the season as starting right back. And then there was a period of time where, uh, you and Bradley mentioned you're on the bench, kind of uh, acting in that leadership role. We're in, nearing the end of the regular season, and you kind of seem like you're back in that groove. So what is it like for you to be in this position going into the playoffs? Uh, for me, it's just been always just trying to plug away and trying to, to trust in, you know, my abilities to trust in, you know, the chance that I get and to make every opportunity count. Um, I think I've had, you know, very similar seasons where it's been ups and downs and I've you know, tried to persevere and end strong. And hopefully I can do that this season. Hopefully it can continue. Um, but, you know, I'm ready for any role that I'm given. Yeah. Under the understanding that you guys have a lot to play for, a lot of goals left within the season, how important is it for you all to also reflect on what you guys have accomplished being a first-year team and, you know, doing something that's pretty remarkable and what you guys have been able to do so far yeah I mean, you know brad talked about our hard resets it's it's something that we like to do it's you know 
we accomplished something, we're happy about it, but we're not satisfied and we're not, and that's not just going to take over our moment or the rest of the season. So it's, it's knocking these things off our list that we want to accomplish and it's immediately moving forward and working on, you know, our next one. Let's go to John Lupo. Uh, Jake, first of all, congratulations on winning the Western Conference Championship. It really is a tremendous accomplishment. I wanted to ask you two questions. First of all, just Roman Berkey, I believe, was the club's first signing when they were putting this roster together. He, for me, he's been by far the best goalkeeper in MLS this year. He's the favorite to win goalkeeper of the year. Just talk about what it's like to have him back there consistently match in and match out and playing behind a guy who's been that good all season. Yeah, he, he is the best goalkeeper in the league, um, you know, hands down. So it's it's been an honor to play with him. You know, I've, I've known him, watching him play, you know, his career. Um, so I thought it was pretty special that I was able to, you know, get the opportunity to be on his team and to play with him. Um, he's been a great leader to us. He's, you know, I, I think I said this two games ago, he's, he's, he's single-handedly, you know, saved us a lot of points throughout the season. Um, and... I, you know, I think he's he should be in contention for, you know, MVP. Um, I know he probably won't get it because he's a goalie. But, you know, the what he brings to our club and to our team, you know, day in and day out is something that uh, is not measurable. I agree with you about him being in consideration for MVP. And I wanted to ask you, the last four matches, you guys have only conceded three goals. The Austin game, they scored three. The Galaxy had two. What's been the difference in these last four games where you've been so good defensively and facing teams like Vancouver, who you know well, and Seattle, who have firepower going into the playoffs? What do you think will be the key to continue to maintain that defensive level against two high-powered teams and then in the playoffs? And what's been the difference that you've been able to get to that level now? Yeah, I think we've had, you know, good moments, um, but it's it's something that we need to see through for, for 90 minutes. Um, I think it's a collective. It's not just the back four in Berkey. It's everybody defending. And we've had that, you know, all season. That's been, you know, something that we've taken on to, to have everybody defend. Um, and I think, you know, you see after the game, we gave up that goal on the last kick. And, you know, we were happy that we won. But I think most of us were pretty upset we didn't get a clean sheet. And that's just, that's the mentality that we have game in and game out, that, you know, we hold ourselves to that standard. We'll go back to Hart. Hi, I had another question. Uh, Jake, in that earlier game against Vancouver uh, earlier this season, you mentioned uh, playing within your emotions, not getting too fired up. You got a yellow card in that game. You could have probably gotten sent off. So how do you keep those emotions in check? How do you not get too fired up and kind of tuck some of that energy away? Thanks for bringing that up, Har. I, I can always count on you to, to, to bring me back down a notch. Um, yeah, no, I, I think, um, you know, the style of play that we play, I've, we're always aggressive. Um, you know, we're always on the front foot. We're always, you know, attacking. So it's something that, yeah, I'm excited to come back, you know, to BC Place and play, but I do have to, um, yeah, make sure I do that in the right way, I guess. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, see you. Jake, thank you for joining us.